Hey Tapu, this is Kasakmaya Keparu, and I'm here with a new video for you. And this one's going to be on Hollywood programming. I came across this great article on uh, this blog or website called Before It's News, and the name of it is Confessions of an Illuminati Human Programmer and Hollywood's Role in the Illuminati. So there's always some article or some interview with some person claiming to be a former member of the Illuminati and he's a whistleblower or, or what have you. Um, but I found this article of particular interest because it dealt with uh, programming on a number of different levels. So um, I want to go into that, but before I do, I want to play this video that's actually on the website, and it's an awesome video. Um, just this beginning because it talks about, um, it's actually from the movie Network. It's an older movie, and it really, in my mind, encapsulates the idea that we need to get a little bit angry at our situation and the way we are at and what we're dealing with because if if we don't start to care or recognize that there is an issue and become angry about it and there's no way we're going to take the appropriate steps to get resolution so watch this clip from the film uh, network i think you will really enjoy it and understand the frustration that this character is going through i don't have to tell you things are bad everybody knows things are bad the dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. There's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel built and radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. You might want to ask yourself. Now, the idea here is to understand is that, of course, you know, it's, it's not a good idea to have an emotional outburst, but it is a good idea to become concerned and, as I said before, to start work on taking appropriate measures to make things better. Because the majority of people um, in the country are satisfied with mediocrity. And we go about our daily lives and we, we don't really look deeply into what's going on and what's controlling things. And this is where this article comes into play to understand that we are constantly under programming, especially by Hollywood and uh, the media advertising industry. And I know a lot about that because I used to work for them. But again, one of the most important things here is I want to turn your attention to is dealing with the um, idea of how the Illuminati programs people. And specifically, the article talks about them abducting and doing ritualistic ceremonies with young children and that is a way in which children are indoctrinated into their whole philosophy and system of a satanic worship but also in the methodology behind how programming is done so let me read some of this and what i want to do is i want to clear up the misconceptions and the false information because when you start reading all of this conspiracy theory stuff it, uh, some of it has its basis in fact but a lot of it is just totally wrong and that's because of, of a number of reasons because they don't want to accept the fact that the Illuminati um, can control time and space we still think in a left brain perspective mainly superficial that everything is being controlled by what you can touch see hear, and feel but we don't understand that there are things that are going on behind that or, or beyond our comprehension so it's, it's easy for us to accept that the Illuminati will build up its military might to put in place a one or a new world order or a one world government. But we can't accept the idea that that's not going to happen because the Illuminati can alter history, alter our perception of, of history and create a new future for us that we will never remember the past that we had and we're putting in place a new future. 
So they don't have to, Illuminati doesn't have to create this militarized George Orwellian 1984 world because their plan is slowly but surely through consistent small efforts to change the mindset of the people so that you become a willing participant in your own slavery. And that is the best way for them to win this because it will not be a bloody revolution. They will not be a fight because they're indoctrinating um, each new generation into a certain philosophy and ideology to where it accepts its enslavement. And that to me is, is probably one of the most evil schemes or evil genius of the Illuminati is to be so patient and so folk laser focused on what they have to do and this conditioning is cumulative it just generation after generation is exposed to it to the point of where you accept certain things vis-a-vis -vis, we only accept the things that we can see here and feel we do not accept anything else that falls beyond that you know and in this article is very interesting the article talks about nasa and what we still don't understand they're refusing to accept is the fact that NASA lies to us. And we have made contact with extraterrestrial civilizations a long time ago. Contact has been made, but that is being kept from the majority of the population. And so when I say that, automatically your filters go up and you're like, oh, that's crazy, that's crazy, because you can be been conditioned to think that's crazy, that's why. So let me just read this really uh, quickly so you can understand the type of programming that the Illuminati is involved in. Uh, again, it's this ritualistic programming. So it's kind of, um, this is kind of graphic, so be prepared. It says, this part of an ongoing series on complex programming that I'm writing as an outline for a sequel to my book, Breaking the Change. In this article, I will be discussing one of the most traumatic forms of programming that a survivor can undergo. This programming involves the use of near-death experiences. The Illuminati have studied human neurology, uh, neuropsychology for years, and the effects of traumatic conditioning on the human brain and psyche. In their search for better and more reliable methods of ingraining programming, they have utilized research from a variety of sources, governmental agencies, totalitarian regimes, and their own experimentation that is ongoing. Um, on a continuous and secretive basis. But some of the foundations for this type of programming have been in place for centuries. One of the oldest rituals that the Illuminati utilizes is the resurrection ceremony. In fact, the phoenix symbol of death and new life is one of their highest symbols and symbolizes the coming of the new world order and its leader. How is resurrection programming done or its variations? I will share what I have undergone and or witness a young child of around two or three will be very heavily traumatized during an occult ceremony they will be abused beaten shocked and even suffocated and given drugs to create a state that is near death the child will almost always at this point feel that they are suspended above their body watching the unconscious beneath that beneath that has been tortured to the point of being near death there will always be medical personnel involved in programming at this depth who are skilled at monitoring the child's physical state and of uh, resuscitating them. Um, resuscitation equipment and medications are on hand at all times. The child in this extremity will have their deepest core called out at this point and brought to consciousness in extreme pain. They will then be told that they have a choice to face certain death or to choose life if they will invite a powerful demon inside. The child chooses life, the demon enters, the child, under, the child goes unconscious and then awakens later in clean clothing in a soft bed with healing ointments on. They um, are extremely weak and shaky and are told by a kind caring soft voice woman or man that the child had died but the demon brought them back to life that they owe their very life and heartbeat to it and those who saved them the child is also told that if they ask the demonic entity to leave that they will revert to their near-death dying state they were in when it was it made its entrance this is one type of near-death experience used to control and terrify a very young child and to force it to accept a demonic spirituality under the most traumatic and coercive circumstances imaginable. The child feels marked and chosen for life by this experience and is profoundly influences, it profoundly influences the child's core beliefs about him 
herself and their deepest reality. It is also one of the most horrible manipulations of a young child that can occur and is designed to take away their free choice of will. Now, I don't agree entirely with what the conclusion is in terms of what the ceremony is supposed to do. All right, but I'll say this: um, that the the very act of a near death experience and the torture is that's accurate in what they do. But the purpose, you know, a lot of people have been asking, well, why do the Illuminati abduct children and put them through this terrible experience? And they say, you know, well, the Illuminati does this because children are very innocent beings, and and their spirit and their soul is 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 gives the um, the ritual participants the energy. But that's not correct. That's entirely wrong. So. The reason why children are using this type of ritualistic ceremony is because they don't, they're, they're, it's true they're innocent, they have no um, predetermined likes or dislikes, they're very trusting, they're very open. We as adults have um, like psychological blocks. So we can't, you ever heard the term a person can't be, some people can't be hypnotized, that you can't under hypnosis do something you wouldn't normally do, which is true. It's because you have already have a conditioning or a programming that says, I will not accept this or I will not do this because it's not natural for me. So an adult has those blocks, um, which in some sense you can say are safety mechanisms. Children don't have those blocks. They're very receptive to anything that's given to them. So that programming goes straight to the core of their being. Now the reason for the programming, you have to understand this, the reason for the programming is to manipulate reality. It is not so much so that a demonic spirit can come into them, which is true. That's that's part of what they want to do. They want the demonic spirit. So the traumatization and the near-death experiences is a way of bridging the doorway between another world and this world and allowing the demonic entity to come into this world but also to because you are God man God woman and you can manipulate the world around you because the world around you is what a hologram because you can manipulate that world putting someone especially a child who doesn't have any predetermined belief systems to block block him or her um, from accepting those uh, beliefs, they accept everything. It's impregnated, it, the, the seed is impregnated, and it germinates, and they manifest that reality. So for a, a child going through the satanic ritual, it's easy to be programmed to manifest a certain type of reality, and it's also easy to bridge the gap from this world to the next and bring in demonic entities, okay? So that's what's really happening here, and it's not so much just as what they're saying to traumatize give a child a new belief system so a child thinks differently yeah that's that's going to happen but i don't understand why you would need to go through all of that just to have someone accept a new belief system where there's other means and methods of doing it but the main purpose again because children are innocent they're not preconditioned and it's easy for them to accept a seed to nurture it and to manifest that new reality and if you do this on a widespread level you reach what we call the tipping point uh if any of you have studied the 100 monkey syndrome where if a certain group of people have a belief system um, then that belief system starts to spread like a virus and then it becomes something that's like um, transferred through people in that race or in that gender hence we see how cultures are born because you have a certain segment of the population maybe 10,000 people who are practicing a certain culture and before you know it the entire race of people whether it be like 1.5 million are suddenly practicing that same culture and you're wondering well how did the people in the East Coast get this this knowledge and ideas because they never had contact with the people on the West Coast and that's because we have what we call is the collective unconscious the collective consciousness which the collective consciousness sh uh, connects us you know and we share ideas and things this is what we call also you can refer to this as the Akashic records where we're sharing ideas and thoughts everything is shared through the collective unconscious and also within that collective unconscious what Carl Jung talked about are archetypes and I don't want to go too deeply into that but um, there's also the thing where the Illuminati uses symbols and these symbols are prevalent in almost everything we have around us and I was just...